Hi, this is Mark again, and this is our next video in the series about European Interparties Pattern Review, otherwise known as Opposition before the European Patent Office. So we've looked at the whole proceedings now, and we're just about to start the hearing. So we're waiting outside the hearing, and we're going to be invited in. We'll usually be starting at something like 9 or 9.30 in the morning, and the, one of the examiners will come out and invite us into the hearing and the examiner will indicate where we should be seated. So bear this in mind because it might be that the opponent is to the right of you or the proprietor to the right of you depending on who you are and you need to think ahead of time about who's going to sit where because you don't really want to end up sitting in the wrong place and finding that the person leading the hearing is actually not really in the best position to keep an eye on the other party and to keep an eye on the panel. Very trivial points but well worth considering. Now then, the chairman of the proceedings will then start, introduce everybody, make sure that the ID of the people are present is noted and look, check out all the formalities. And hopefully that should be nice and straightforward and there won't be any issue. Now the next stage is the thing that I can find sometimes the most surprising. The opposition division through the chairman will say, and first of all we are going to consider this. Uh, it might be sufficiency, it might be added matter, it's very unlikely to be novelty or inventive step. And it could well be that they don't actually go straight to the opponent, they might simply go straight to the proprietor and say to the proprietor, we would like you to explain about sufficiency of disclosure. And you might not have expected that because what has happened is that the opposition division has come together, so usually the chairman and two um, technical representatives, very rarely you will also have a legal representative in case there's a particular legal issue um, in the case and they will have considered the case in detail beforehand and will have decided what is the key issue they want to start off with and you should be prepared to be put on the spot with either of sufficiency of disclosure or added matter. As I say in my experience very rarely has it gone straight to, straight to novelty or for that matter inventive step. So again being prepared making sure that all the information is there. The other thing at the hearing is, in my view, it is actually very useful to have two representatives for a given party because it can be very intense. You've got three people at the European Patents Office on the um, Opposition Division. Now, one of them will be primarily writing notes. One will usually be the examiner from the uh, original prosecution and the chairman will lead. But nevertheless, each of them has the opportunity to chip in and you want to see, are they writing things down? What are they making notes on? What has caught their attention? And this can be quite difficult to do if as well you are looking at the other party and trying to figure out what they're up to. So having two, par having two representatives is usually very worthwhile, particularly if one party, you know, if one representative dries up or loses the train of thought, um, or maybe actually has a very good, competent uh, explanation but then there's a summary that could be made at the end or a, a couple of additional points can be made. I often tend to find that if there are two representatives and the representative repeats themselves, they can sometimes get short shrift and say, well, why are you repeating? Or yes, thank you, we've heard that before. However, if the other representative says something, they will usually say it in a different way and I have yet to see a position where that other representative, the co-representative, has been told, ah yes, but we've heard that immediately before. So two representatives is very, very useful. I appreciate it has more cost, but at the end of the day, what really matters is, do you win at the end of the day or not? So the hearing will progress. It will usually go in the format of sufficiency of disclosure, if that is going to be considered much at all. And um, added matter. Now, if added matter is a key issue, that may well come first. And these issues will sometimes be discussed for two or three hours. Initial presentation might be 20 or 30 minutes and then there will be a response from the other party and the chairman will adjudicate. Now one of the key issues in these proceedings is the right to be heard and chairmen or chairwomen of these proceedings usually adhere to that very, very rigorously. So if you've got something to say, have confidence to say it and take your time saying it, particularly if there's translation because there's nothing worse than trying to speak too quickly and the translators can't keep up. Now then, there's an awful lot that goes on at the hearing, so I will just draw a line under it at that stage, and the next video I will talk a little bit further about being in the hearing. Thank you.